decades, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados has been writing its name on the history pages of this nation. ICAB's genesis was birthed from the vision and foresight of members from a small, loosely formed body, first referred to as the Barbados Association of Professional Accountants, and then the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados. Ken Hewitt was the president of the former body at the time of the transition and continued in that position when the Institute of Chartered Accountants Act was passed. We needed um, an entity which would help to identify accountants um, in those days, help to an entity that would be able to liaise with government in the context of legislation, um, coming legislation, existing legislation, and also an entity that would be able to set up standards and um, have the um, authority of its members to maintain those standards. Propelled by the diversification of the economy and a burgeoning business environment, the formation of ICAB was vigorously pursued. We wanted to have a body that would last through the ages and we felt that having it done through an act of parliament would have been the right thing to do. We got some difficult responses from government and the Prime Minister at the time, the Right Honourable Harold Bard, said that he was not prepared to clutter up the statute books for the Institute. It's Philip Graves who spoke to the Prime Minister and cleared that and then Henry Ford um, took it on and introduced the bill in Parliament as a private member's bill and it was unanimously, unanimously approved and that was the beginning. On November 1st, 1974, ICAB was established by an act of Parliament and the hard work began to create a structure for an entity which would last through the ages. The next step was to get exclusive practicing rights under the Companies Act to work with the company law committee that was revising the, the old 1910 Companies Act. Once we got the agreement of the committee, we then had to deal with the hurdle of providing guarantees to those who were practicing as accountants but were not, did not have a professional qualification. These two important achievements were the first of many for ICAB. Patrick Toppin became president of ICAB for the first time from 1981 to 1983, during which time the institute put down roots and had its own administrative department. When I became president, we were still operating out of a variety of offices. Right, depending on who the president, that's where the office was. So the, the, the two things that I regard as accomplishments during that earlier period was for the first time the institute had a home. And that first office was located at what is now the John Lovell building right next to Purity Bakery. Um, the purchase of that building was funded by a grant and a lot of professional associations were supposed to be right there, but that there was the first ICAB office. Okay. And also during my term, it was for the first time to have what I regard as a full-time secretariat. I was able to persuade um, a fellow by the name of Jeremy Williams, who had a lot of experience working with ACCA to come and spend a few years with us so that he was the first admin officer, Jeremy Williams. And he also had um, interest in training. From inception, ICAB has been ahead of the curve. One such example is reflected in ICAB becoming a member of IFAC in the 80s, long before the institutes in many other countries joined. In 1983, Joyce Dare became the first female president of ICAB, and during her tenure, she focused on one of the core elements of the Institute, education and development of those coming into the field. 
in the earlier days, people had difficulty passing the exam. Now, what we did was with um, the ACCA, we said, listen, went to Kville and we said, listen, these are the subjects that contain the accountancy exams. If you get your syllabus to cover some of these in the accounting degree or economics or whatever, then we will, they will get exemptions. So that's what happened. We were going to Kville every year and so on. And you know, um, Keith Hunt, I think, was the, the, pres the principal at that time. And the um, courses, when you came out of a Kville first class honors or upper second, you had only about maybe five or, or eight subjects to do. So we found that the pass rate was much higher. We got more people to pass the CGA and the ACCA. And my whole thrust in the institute was not in the membership committee to bring them in, but to make sure they pass the exams. While the 90s proved to be a difficult time for the nation, it presented ICAB with an opportunity to make substantial contributions as it related to policy and legislation. The Institute was in a strong position with a seasoned Patrick Toppin at the helm for a second time. The Institute ended up being involved in quite a number of committees and so on, um, working with the government to establish things like uh, during that period was when the Cooperative Societies Act was established. Um, I served on, on that advisory committee and was able to ensure that the, the audit rights in there were delegated to the institute, members of the institute to charter the contents. All right, so that in the act itself it says, to be an auditor you must be a member of ICAP. Okay? And there are several other acts, the Charity Act has a similar provision, etc., which again was part of the, the thrust that we did then. So that, if you like, was the growing up of the institute. The end of the 90s brought with it a great deal of turbulence as accounting scandals like Enron and WorldCom rocked the profession. Carol Nichols had her work cut out for her when she became president of ICAB in 1998 in the face of a changed global landscape for professional accountants. During that time, we would have had, and under my chairmanship, a complete revamping of the bylaws to be more robust. We actually fashioned those off the Institute of Chartered Accountants of England and Wales. Um, we also introduced specialty practicing certificates. And we tried to educate members as to how ICAB could negotiate for them. We made ICAB more relevant and therefore the membership grew. ICAB recognized was the need to have accountants practice out of limited liability structures in Barbados. So we sought to lobby government to change the leg legislation to allow for that. And that went hand in hand with the redrafting of the bylaws. Um, also, no one would ever want it to happen to them. And therefore, we looked at our regulations. For example, we realized that we did not have the ability to discipline members. We disciplined students, and that was a weakness in our legislation. We sought to strengthen that. I think worldwide, it just opened everyone's eyes, and we really got into a certain amount of self-examination that only served to strengthen the Institute. In 2002, when Betty Brathwaite became the third female president of ICAB, accounting practices remained under scrutiny and additional regulations were being put in place worldwide. At this juncture, Betty went on the offensive and pushed for a change in legislation that would allow the Institute to discipline members. Practice monitoring through ICAC was also employed to ensure the highest standards were being met and that the reputation of the profession remained a stellar one. One of the key achievements of ICAC so far has been to, uh, within the regulation of the profession, is practice monitoring. ICAC has entered into a contract with the ACCA where the ACCA provides that level of support where we go from, where they go from country to country, office to office, just checking and in auditing auditors, to put it, to put it differently, um, and just checking because the countries and the institutes on an individual basis are too small and there's no confidentiality. So what we have is a team, an independent team, that comes in and checks. So that in itself helps to raise 
the standards. Brian Robinson took up the mantle as president of ICAB from 2004 to 2006 as the profession began to settle down. CSME and the free movement of nationals were in focus, and as a result, ICAP, in tandem with the other regional institutes and ICAC, put things in place to ensure the profession was in sync at a regional level. The relevance of having so many different bodies and an overriding umbrella body started coming into play. Uh, ICAP had just been through its bylaws review because we had some sp particular issues. One was the movement of nationals because we had certain requirements to get a practicing certificate in order to work here. Um, as a Barbadian coming up, you needed to do things, you needed to qualify, you needed to have work experience to get a practicing certificate. With free movement of nationals and so on, you would find more uh, Trinidadians, Antiguans, St. Lucians, Jamaicans wanting to come here, but what have they gone through at their end? to get their practicing certificate. So there was a need to standardize across the region, everything. Uh, admission to the institutes, um, qualifying for practicing certificates, all these various things. We had a shared arrangement with other institutes in the region. In other words, we had a list of practicing accountants, you would have had a list. As long as you went through the same procedures as our people went through, then we would have a reciprocal arrangement where you could you could come over here and then continue to practice here with week and go in. When Andrew Brathwaite became president of ICAB in 2010, he sought to strengthen and raise the profile of the institute in a number of ways. Reginald Farley was brought on as executive director, a five-year strategic plan was put in place, and the institute became the most vocal it had ever been on matters of national significance. One of the first things we did was to become members of the, the PPSA, the Barbados Private Sector Association. That then meant that we were able to attend meetings of the social partnership and we were able to make contributions at a high level to, to key matters of, of national interest and to make uh, policy input to, to the government of Barbados. Um, since then, we've been invited annually to make submissions to the Minister of Finance in preparation for the, the, the budgetary proposals. Um, we've also been invited to, to nominate a member to sit on the Barbados Treaty, Tax Treaty Negotiating Team. There were a couple of factors um, pushing us towards being more vocal and more visible and taking positions on matters of, of national interest. For one, as members of the International Federation of Accountants, one of the things that IFAC says is that, or is that um, accountants are supposed to protect the, the, the public interest. Accountants should act in the, in the public interest and not just in their own interests or in the interests of their, of their employers. So we felt that we really needed to, to, to act in the public interest. Apart from that, there was, we, we felt a void. There weren't many people not involved with the political parties who were speaking out of, of, on matters of national interest. Uh, apart from that, given the skill set of our members, our members are involved in, in companies and entities in all se um, sectors of the economy um, and at all levels um, in, those, in those entities, so senior management, directors, etc. So we felt that our members uh, really would bring uh, value to the debate. Our members will have a significant contribution to make to the national debate, given their, their expertise and experience and involvement at all levels of the economy. The milestones represented here barely scratch the surface in relation to what ICAB has achieved and the impact it has made to the development of Barbados. What was once a small group of accountants that would come together to discuss issues about the profession has transformed into an entity which has contributed tremendously to the national landscape in tangible terms. Forty years later, ICAB is an institution that is regarded globally for bringing high levels of integrity and standards to the accounting profession in Barbados. This is a legacy that those who helped to create can be proud of.